am a crime. I do not take orders from you. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to be covering if Seno Prime had his vehicle parts in the Ark. And stay tuned to the end of the video to figure out what happened to the real-life Seno Prime fire truck after filming. Now, in short, Seno Prime did not have his vehicle parts while he was in the Ark. The reason why most people mistake this fact is because Sentinel does not look like a protoform, and that's because he has a Cybertronian vehicle mode, just like Megatron in Transformers 2007 and Shockwave in Transformers Dark of the Moon. And if you are confused on why some Transformers have a Cybertronian vehicle mode and others do not, Check out my Protoform Misconceptions video since I covered this in greater detail. Now, the reason why we can tell that Sentinel did not have an Earth mode in the Ark is because he doesn't have any of the Rosenbauer Panther Firetruck markings on him, such as the Rosenbauer and EMT logos. Furthermore, he doesn't have the hose nozzle on his wrist. Additionally, after he is revived by the Matrix, we get to see his body a lot better, and we can clearly see that he has Cybertronian tires on his legs and chest. On top of that, his color scheme is a lot more muted and he has a lot of yellow sparkle throughout him, which eventually would end up turning black, gray, and silver after he scanned his vehicle mode. One example of this would be his shoulder pads. In his Cybertronian mode, they are partly yellow, but they end up turning black after he scans his vehicle mode. And speaking of vehicle modes, we never got an explanation on how Seno Prime got his 2001 Rosenbauer Panther 6x6 firetruck form. But if you remember, in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Ness supplied Skids and Mudflap with their Chevy B and Trax alternate modes. And I think the same case happened with Sentinel, with Ness supplying his firetruck form. To further back this up, it is implied that Ness upgraded all of the vehicle mode forms for the Autobots, besides Optimus and Ironhide during the events between Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. As we know, Ratchet got a whole new paint job, Bumblebee got an entirely new Camaro alternate mode, Skids and Mudflap were planned to get two new Chevy B alternate modes before they were cut from the film, and Sideswipe's vehicle mode was modified to become a roadster. So with that said, I think it's safe to say that Ness applied Seno Prime's vehicle mode. And since we're on the topic of his vehicle mode, did you know that his color scheme in the movie is illegal according to federal regulations? The 2001 Rosenbauer Panther 6x6 firetruck is an ARFF, which stands for Aircraft Rescue and Firefighting Vehicle. The Federal Aviation Administration requires that all ARFF should be painted a yellowish green. The reason why Sentinel was not this color in the movie was because Bay did not like it and instead wanted a red on top of black color scheme. But these were not the only modifications done to the Panther. The windows were tinted very dark, the emergency lights were changed from red to blue, and the 54-foot boom black ladder was repainted to have a gray metallic shine. And in the end, thanks to Bay's modifications, we got an epic-looking firetruck to be the form of an even more epic villain, despite it not being FAA approved. As for the in-universe explanation on why Sentinel did not obtain the yellowish color, that's because Transformers can modify the way their vehicle mode looks. For example, in Transformers Age of Extinction, Optimus scanned a white Western Star truck and was able to modify its appearance. Sentinel merely just did the same, but to a lesser extent, with him modifying his vehicle mode colors to match his color palette in robot mode. He even edited his vehicle mode to have a black Autobot logo on his door. Which further proves my theory on Transformers being able to edit their vehicle modes. And if you wondered what Sano Prime could have possibly looked like if he adopted the FAA color scheme, Omega63 on Reddit did just that. And I gotta say that Sentinel honestly would have not looked that bad. Granted, the yellow should be a tad bit lighter, but the photos get the point across, and I think it would be entirely possible that Studio Series could repaint the Sentinel Prime mold into these colors as a throwback to the first Dark of the Moon teaser trailer, where Sentinel Prime was a yellowish gold, which if you don't know already was due to match his concept art colors where he was still being called Ultra Magnus. And lastly, if you wondered what happened to the Panther after it was done filming, on November 12, 2012, a user on Blogger.com by the name of Carolyn Watson Dubish documented her time at the Veterans Day Parade in Arizona. 
but unbeknownst to her, she would capture an image of Sentinel Prime. In her blog, she states how this truck was an on-duty fire truck at the Pablo Verde Nuclear Generation Station in Western Arizona. Later in 2014, a user on Twitter by the name of Natalyn G. Worley spotted Sentinel Prime at the Palo Verde Nuclear Generation Station, saying how it was the actual truck from Dark of the Moon. Just two years later in 2016, APS, better known as the Arizona Public Service Company, who owns 29.1% of the plant and is the largest electric utility company in Arizona, posted on their Twitter page an image of Sentinel Prime next to another fire truck. The post told viewers to come early at the D-backs game to see the truck in person at the first responders vehicle show. Later in 2018, the Library of Congress posted a photo of the on-site fire department and emergency medical dispatch center at the Palo Verde nuclear generating station. And we can clearly see Sentinel chilling out right in the middle. The same year, a Redditor by the name of Aim Western posted a picture of himself next to Sentinel Prime. The post explained how he was an employee at the plant, along with confirming in the comments that this was indeed the actual truck used for filming and not a replica. He even says that they were able to keep the Autobot logo on it. Now, though Sentinel is surprisingly similar to how he looked in the Dark of the Moon movie, he is now sporting a few differences, such as him having the Palo Verde Nuclear Fire Department logo on him, and his number being changed from 316 to F351. In addition, some of his lights were changed to red, the letters NERV were added on top of his bumper, one of his EMT logos was removed, his American flag is now faded, there is a logo with the code 22210 P, the word foam is now on his window next to some colorful lights he did not have on him before, and he is now missing the Rosenbauer logo on his cargo door. And that was the most recent image of Sentinel that we have. Though we don't know where he is in the current year of 2021, I think it would be safe to say that he is still at the plant ready to fight a fire on a moment's notice. And lastly, I just wanted to let you guys know that the Fire Brothers and I finally did a long-awaited collab and it's live right now on his channel. So if you would like to see it, click the i-card above to hear us discuss the many ways Megatron could have won. And trust me, there are so many ways that you would have never even thought of. And just like that, now you know that Seno Prime did not have his vehicle parts in the arc. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.